because of my intelligence gathering around here in Texas, I learned about this in the mid-1990s, the CIA, every police chief, every major sheriff, the county commissioners, they first come in and assess you and admit they're there from the CIA, even low-level people, and then they find out they've also been tracking most of these people and have files on their psychological makeup, and then they try to compromise them. And I've interviewed the San Antonio police chief on video. I've, I've, I've talked to the, the head of emergency management in Kingsville. I've, I've interviewed the police chief of Alice, Texas. And you can tell the ones that have taken the bait and those that haven't. You know, Allie Phillip has been in the Army, Army Intelligence, you know, 20-something years uh, you know, on, on a police force. After that, they come in, and they just said, hi, we're Delta Force, and we just want to be friends with you, and we just want you to take, well, they went to him and a whole bunch of other people, uh, the fire chief, all of them, here's all this money. We'll give you this money uh, if uh, you'll just be our friend and let us do some operations around here, some secret operations, but also some training, and then that's how they corrupt the local government, and then that's also who they find out who isn't going to work with them. Did they ask you who your campaign manager was? I don't recall if they did or not. They probably wanted to know who the brains behind you brains. Well, if they if they really if That's they really it. got in that deep, Willie, they'd find out that we were flying by the seat of our pants. That's why it's so hard to. We I laugh out. today <laughs> because they all they all thought that we were some big piece of intricate machinery that defeated the system, mm -hmm. and it was the opposite. We we didn't know from week to week what we were truly going to do next, and we went with the f flow of how the campaign went. And uh, I laugh because I only raised three hundred thousand dollars. Well, you caught a wave of also popular and, discontent, and people liked you. Well, I, the, the 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 big thing was because I didn't have to buy name recognition in Minnesota, and when you you know, and plus I had a statewide radio show that I did right oh, yeah. before, so I was able to expound my political positions all the way up until they pulled me off the air when I filed. Without going the through their their normal media filter, you were able to get right to yeah. the people. Yeah. You know Al Franken? Yeah. 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 He's running for Senate. But I oppose him. Yeah. I, I support Dean Barkley, who you met down here. Dean's running instead of me. I, I'm, I, I thought about running, and I got right on the verge. And uh, In fact, I, I don't mind telling the story. It ended up a coin flip. That you either would or were or would not. Yeah, because I came home that day and it was four o'clock, and my wife and I and we looked at each other and I said, well, "What should I do?" The filing closed at five. I knew I had to leave at four to get there by four thirty to complete it in time. And I turned to Terry, my wife, and I said, "Honey, what should I do?" Because I, I constantly fight it, Willie, of the fact that if not me, then who? Mm -hmm. You know, and I think back to our forefathers of our country and remember how they put their asses on the line. That I remember who was it? Ben Franklin said, What was his quote? If we all don't hang together, we'll sure, or hang we'll separately, hang separate, however it went. But it meant, in other words, we're all going to get hung. If we don't succeed, we're dead meat. But that's the good part about the point and, of no return, you're and, committed. And, you know, I, I, and so that's the fight I went through, you know of what do I do at this point in my life? I'm 57 and I kept thinking, you know, this is six years. That means I won't be done till I'm 63 at the soonest. And I thought, I don't even like these people. Why would I want to go hang out with them for six years? Why would I force myself to go? It's, it's almost like sentencing yourself back into jail. It's <laughs> yeah. like, it's like, Willie, it's like violating your parole they asked on me purpose. They run for years after, you know, this and that, Senator Cox and all that local today. <laughs> no, yeah, you won in a minute. And I couldn't get through the cocktail parties. Yeah. My health wouldn't take it. Yeah, no, I mean, and I sat and thought, this is like being on parole where I am now with freedom and purposely violating my parole to go back into jail. Yeah. And I thought, I don't want to go to jail. So I was so torn, and I'll never forget, my wife looked at me, and she said, we've been together 33 years now. I said, yep. She said, you've always believed in fate and destiny, haven't you? And I said, yeah, pretty much. She looked at me and said, flip a coin. And, I, and it hit me, and I looked at her, and I said, you're right. Let's leave it to fate and destiny. So I walked over, grabbed a quarter, I walked to the center of our floor, and I looked at my wife and I said, heads I run, tails I don't. She nodded at me, I flipped it up in the air, and it came down tails. And I looked at my wife, I said, I don't run, let's move on. And she actually broke down and looked at me and goes, you don't want to go two out of three? 
Ah. And I said, if I do that, then it was failed to do it in the first place. Yeah. I said, I can't do that. That's I said, we left it to fate and destiny, and fate spoke. If, they, if I was meant to have run, it would have came up heads. Yeah, and it came up tails, and so I moved on from that point, and I've, I've tried not to look back. That's when I called you, Alex, and said I'm not running. Yeah. You know, because that was what did it.